Hello friends and welcome to a very special TBR video featuring Escape the Readathon and the Black Cat Carnival. <laughs> Okay, be free, be free. <sighs> they didn't want to participate in my video. Here, you want a little treat for that? <laughs> yes, okay. So right now we are going to be doing my May TBR and I am doing this in a little different format because usually I do my TBRs with my wrap ups, but because I am participating in the Escape the Readathon, the Black Cat Carnival, it's a readathon happening for the entire month of May. It includes very specific prompts, and because of that, I had to think really far ahead when it came to my TBR. May is going to be a bit of a complicated month for me because I am doing this readathon as well as going on a big trip, and the two things don't really mesh perfectly well. But the good thing about this readathon is that it does not necessarily have to be horror books that you are reading but I want to read horror in spirit of the theme. In order to hit all of the things that I want to hit in the month of May, I'm going to have to get a little bit creative. So I went ahead and pulled everything off of my TBR that I think could possibly fit a prompt, and we are going to go through and assign them. Now, obviously I am not going to get through every single book or every single prompt. I'm only committed to reading four books for the readathon, just to be on the safe side. But because of this trip I have coming up, I do anticipate that I will actually be able to get through more books. But I've never done this readathon before, and I think that you don't know which prompt your team is going to be reading for at any given moment until you advance to the next stage. So it's not there's not a an order that you read the prompts to. So I think because of that, you have to assign a book to every prompt and then just be ready when it's your team's turn to read that specific prompt. I will link all of the information to Escape the Readathon down in the description below. It is hosted by Books with Lexi, so go ahead and check out her channel where she will give you all of the information that is needed for this readathon, but I am so excited about it, and that is why I am building this TBR especially for this readathon. Okay, let me pop up the prompts and we will go through them together. The first prompt is Good Fortune, and this is your most read or your favorite genre. Next is Unfair Wheel, a book on the top of your TBR. Food Court is a popcorn read. This can mean however you interpret it. I interpret this as a, a very quick, easy, and generally kind of just for fun type of read. Um, Cutthroat Circus is a book that is inspired by the thumbnail of one of the readathon hosts. Heads Up is an author that you've read before. Horsing Around is an intimidating read. Bullseye Battle is a new to you author. No Strings Attached is a book that a friend recommends. Hard Hitter is a five star prediction. And Fun House is a poll pick. So now with all of these in mind, of course I have lots of books that could fit into various different prompts. But the next consideration I have to think about is what I'm going to be taking on my trip, which is about 10 days long. So it's pretty long and I will be, you know, planning on doing a lot of reading during that time. But I really only want to bring paperback books because I don't want to bring hardcover on um, the planes and on the, the trip. They're just hard to travel with. So that is something I'm thinking about as well. But that trip does not happen until the very end of May, the last week of May. So all of this, a lot of it is going to happen before that trip. So it's just something that I need to consider and yeah, we'll see how it goes. But still there, I have to think about what books I'm going to bring on that trip and if and how they can fit into one of these prompts. Okay, so right off the top, because you can see it on my stack here and because it is a library book, I have Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson. This is, I believe it's a, it's classified as a folk horror novel about an Irish children's television show that has something creepy going on with it. I don't really know, but I do know that this has been pretty highly rated and it's come recommended by a lot of people. So there are a couple different prompts that this could fit into. Recently, I watched our lovely host, Books with Lexi. I watched her talk about this book in a recent video and she praised it very, very highly. So because of that, this could be classified as a book that a friend or other booktuber recommends. And also red and black really matches her color scheme. She uses these colors a lot. So I could also fit this in to the thumbnail category. 
Next up, another easy one kind of right away. This is the only book on my TBR that I would consider a popcorn read. This is Expiration Dates by Re Rebecca Serrell. It is a uh, very quick, easy uh, romance book. I don't read a lot of them, but I have read Rebecca Serrell in the past. I had one slam dunk from her and one big miss. So this would be my third time with her and we'll, this is really my last chance. If this one doesn't nail it, I think I'm going to be done with her, but it is a very short read. I think I would be able to get through this probably in one sitting, which is very ideal for a readathon. Next up, we have A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. And I actually am already well into this. I'm about 200 pages into it, but there's a lot left to go. I'm not even at 50%. And as long as you read 50% of a book, it can count towards this readathon. And I really have been enjoying this book. Like I actually do think it's phenomenal. Um, and I've been trying to get through it, but I really enjoyed the experience of reading this while I was traveling and just the kind of like isolation of like being in the plane. And that really forced me to sit down with it because it is, it's pretty dense, honestly. Like I'm having a good time, but it is dense. And I just found that like, I liked to read this while traveling. So I may even keep saving this until I go on my trip. And so I can continue reading it in the airport, in the plane. It just seemed to be the, the perfect atmosphere to read this in for me. So this is high on the list. Next up, I have two books that kind of go hand in hand. So I have A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock and Diavola by Jennifer Thorne. These two books are extremely high priority for me for May. They are basically the non-negotiables of May. Um, and both of them could fit into a couple of different categories. They could both fit into the top of the TBR category. This one could also very easily fit the thumbnail theme. Both of them are new to me authors, so both of them would work for that prompt as well. So there's a couple different ways that I can get both of these in, but these are absolute must reads. I've actually been saving them specifically for this readathon because I got both of these books in the month of April and I was going to pick them both up right away. And then I found out about this readathon and I am saving them specifically to read for Escape the Readathon. Oh yeah, I didn't say what category this one would fit into. And I think again, it can fit into a couple. It could fit under, under my most read genres. This is contemporary. Well, it's actually not contemporary. This is historical fiction, but it is literary fiction. So I would consider that my most read genre. Um, or favorite genre. And then I also could have this for a friend recommends because a friend gifted this to me because they thought that I would love it. So it could count for both of those. Next up, oh my goodness, it's Wellness by Nathan Hill. Oh my gosh, how many times has this book been on my TBR in 2024 and I still haven't gotten to it. This is like one of my most highly anticipated reads of 2024. And it's May and we're not even, we haven't even tried it yet. So this is something I really want to get to, but the length is a bit concerning. You know, I, for a readathon purpose, you really want to read more shorter books. I don't know if that's like cheating, but the idea is that the more you read, the more you help your team. So I really don't want to commit to something of this length. However, I have heard so many people say that it is so fantastic that it doesn't, feel like it's actually that long because you're just having such a good time and you can't put it down. And I've been just so looking forward to this. So I had to put it in this stack, even though realistically, I don't know if this is going to be what I gravitate towards just for the point of reading more books for the readathon, but it's in here and this can count for, well, there's two I'm thinking of. One is the five star prediction because it is such a highly anticipated read. And the other is an intimidating read because it is so long. So two prompts that this could go for. We'll see if I end up actually reaching for this. Next up, another book that I think this has to be involved in this readathon somehow. That is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. The prompt that I was thinking specifically this book would really fit for, that would be the author that I've read before because I've read Looking Glass Sound by Catriona Ward before and absolutely loved it. And ever since I've read that book, I've been dying to read more Catriona Ward. I have yet to do it, but Last House on Needless Street is another one of my most anticipated 2024 reads. And look, there's a little black cat on the cover and this Escape the Readathon is the Black Cat Carnival. So it's kind of perfect 
this is up there with these two as a book that like needs to happen in the month of May for this readathon. Next up, The Thursday Murder Club. Okay, well, I did start this in April and I really had high hopes of finishing it, but I just, the last week of April has honestly been, I think, in a very weird mood reading situation where nothing that I'm picking up has really done it for me. And The Thursday Murder Club, I will be honest, I put this down for intimidating read because uh, I'm just like everyone loves this book and I want to love it and because of that it's like making me very hesitant to read it and also the text is like so small and I read the first I got to page 28 and it's also quite dense and just because I was reading this and A Gentleman in Moscow at the same time it just it wasn't working for me in my brain it was taking way too much focus it and so I just like I wanted something that was a little bit easier to pair with a gentleman in Moscow so that's why I ended up putting this down but I do you know I started it so I would actually like to make progress on it it's on my 2024 like must read list so I would love to get to it and I did put this down for intimidating read and I'm like going over the prompts here and seeing like where else it could fit in I don't know it made sense in my mind to put this down for a prompt but like we'll see we'll see that I'm I am actually genuinely intimidated by this book, so maybe that's why it's the most fitting for that prompt. Next up, I have The Night Parade by, is it actually Jamie? Jamie Nakamura Lin. Jamie Nakamura Lin. Night Parade. Um, this is a speculative memoir, and we're actually, this is a book that was chosen for my book club for the month of May. So the reason I have it here is because I will be reading it because it's a book club selection and I always read my book club selections. Well, I always at least attempt them. Sometimes I do DNF them if I don't like them, but I will absolutely be getting to this one. And because I'm already going to be reading it, I want to think about how I can incorporate it into the readathon because the idea is that everything that you read in May should be able to work towards the readathon goals in some way. But looking at my prompt list, I'm not sure what this could potentially, I mean, maybe it could count for a friend recommends since it was a book club pick and my friends in my book club chose it. So there's that, although none of us have read it, so I don't know if that really counts. Um, this could also be a five star prediction because I do love a speculative memoir and as long as it's done, you know, uh, pretty well, I would probably give it a five stars. We'll see. Um, and it also is a new to me author, so that would count for that as well. So like I said, the prompts are very like flexible, pretty much anything that you read can hit at least a couple of them. And also I'm sure that I can find a host thumbnail that has this color scheme, this blue and green. I probably could make that work as well. Okay, and then I have this stack of books that are all paperback because I'm trying to think of something that I want to bring on my trip. And so these are all of the potential paperbacks that I have on my physical TBR. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about them all in depth, but let me just kind of point you to what I'm thinking about some of these. So the first one, this one is an arc, Incidents, in the, Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. This is a horror novel about... Um, it actually follows a child so it's the children's perspective and they come across like a, a horrible creature in their house and I am very interested in this because there's like a lot of white space on the page which means that it would be very easy to read I could probably get through this in like one or two sittings which is again fabulous for the readathon and it's also a horror novel, which is something I'm trying to prioritize for this readathon. So this one is actually pretty high up there. I'm gonna put, kind of put this in the like, basically must read. Although I will say I'm also a little bit nervous because Josh Mallerman, I've never read him before, but he did write Bird Box. No, that's wrong. That's CJ Box, my bad. Oh no, no, he did write Bird Box. What am I talking about? He wrote Bird Box. That makes me nervous because I, while I didn't read Bird Box, um. I saw the movie and it was like really bad. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I will try it. Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. This is a literary fiction contemporary story about motherhood 
and it comes highly recommended. It's shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year and I'm just I'm honestly so excited about this book. I can't even like describe to you my excitement about this book. It's also very short and sweet and uh, once again a lot of categories that this could fit into this. I actually had it listed specifically for um, Good Fortune, my most read or favorite genre because this is a literary fiction. So I'm like dying to get to this and I think it would be great to bring on my trip because it is so small and there's just something amazing about finishing a book while you're on a trip. It's just like magical. So I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Along the same lines, I have Fish Swimming in Dappled Sunlight, another very short book. Um, this is about two people who each think that the other one is a murderer and they're like it takes place over one night in Tokyo and they're trying to like get information out of each other and it just sounds super fascinating and again really short and paperback so it would be great to bring on my trip and again once again fits a lot of the prompts because I'm positive I could probably find a thumbnail that fits this like black black and red another one <laughs> Um, and also it would be a new to me author. So a lot of these, most of these are new to me authors. So they would be able to fulfill that prompt. And also, I don't know if this is a five star prediction for me though. I think, I mean, I hope I really like it, but I don't know if it's quite five star, but it could maybe even be a popcorn read. I don't know. That one might be pushing it a little bit, but it's very short. I won't go over the last four that I have, but I do have this thing between us. Unlikely Animals. The reason I pulled this one was because Ashley from Ashley's Little Library absolutely loves this book. So that would be a great one because she is a host of Escape the Readathon and this could be considered a, a friend booktuber recommendation and how fitting because she really, really loved this book. She gave it five stars. Um, I also have another arc, Toward Eternity by Anton Her. This is a sci-fi, a philosophical sci-fi. Again, pretty short, so love that. And I'm, I'm just very curious about this one. And then I also have The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard. This is a speculative contemporary, no, I don't know if it's contemporary. It's speculative literary fiction, which would absolutely fit in my most read or favorite genre. But to be honest, I don't, I don't think I'm more excited about this one than I am about Soldier Sailor. So this, if only one of those could take that prompt, it's going to be this one. But ugh, this has been on my TBR for so long, so long, like since the end of 2023. So I'm looking to get to these, but I don't know, like any one of these, maybe I could be interested in, maybe if I DNF one of these books, maybe I don't like them, I could sub for any of these. These are all new to me authors. So that would also work. And once again, I could probably find some thumbnails this one I think is probably in Ashley's thumbnail, so that would work as well. And finally, um, the last book or the last prompt is a poll pick. So we had to put up a poll in the Discord server for Escape the Readathon and everybody voted on which one. And there were two books that I threw up a poll for. These are both going to be my audiobook pick. I'm gonna probably read more than just one audiobook in the month of May, but I wanted to get at least one audiobook uh, secured for a reading prompt for the readathon. So I throw up a poll between Happiness Falls by Angie Kim and The Rachel Incident. Um, forget her name, forget the author's name right now. But everybody pretty much overwhelmingly chose Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. And honestly, I'm, I'm not mad about that because I've, I've been dying to get to this book. So I'm very excited about it. And also The Rachel Incident, I, I, know that it's on Spotify with their new audiobook feature and that book is like it's like less than 10 hours on audiobook which is a very fast audiobook so I can basically get to that one anytime that I want whereas Happiness Falls I've been kind of not prioritizing it so I'm perfectly happy that this is the one that was chosen by the poll. Okay that was a lot but we still have one more thing left to accomplish and that is to pull from my TBR teacup. Okay, here we go. So my strategy for this month with the TBR teacup is to choose from one of the, the books that I've already mentioned here um, that fits this prompt. So I'm not going to choose a new book for this TBR teacup like I've done in previous months. I'm just going to try to find a book in here that matches the prompt that I pull. So let's see here. This one is calling to me. Let's see what we've got. 
a book with a blue cover. Well, that works out very, very well because of course, like I mentioned, The Night Parade is a book club, is my book club pick. So I'm already going to be reading it and it has a blue cover. So that one worked out very, very well. Okay, there we go. Those are my May hopefuls and they all align with the Escape the Readathon, the Black Cat Carnival. I'm so excited. Let me know down in the comments below what you are hoping to read in the month of May and if you are participating in the readathon. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, week, month, year, and I will see you back here next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.